A model engineering comedy of errors, part four. Machining a piece of stainless steel, which I originally found in a scrapyard, can be difficult in a home workshop. The question is, why do I have to use a piece of stainless steel? I'm only making a simple pedestal to support a water tank. I could have used brass, phosphor bronze or any other rust proof material, but in a box of bits in my workshop I've got quite a lot of chucking pieces of stainless steel that I bought from a scrapyard many years ago. For the application that I need it for, the diameter of this piece of stainless steel is OK, but it's too long. Before I go any further, I would just like to say that this job would have been a whole lot simpler had I have decided to use my large Smart & Brown 1024 lathe. But I am aware that most people's home workshops do not contain such things, and that's why I don't use it a lot. Of the three lathes I have in my workshop, this is the one I use the most. It's an old Boxford. And for general turning, drilling and boring, it's OK. But it's struggling a bit with this piece of stainless steel. I can only take shallow cuts. What I'm doing is reducing the diameter of part of this piece of bar so then I can use my parting tool to part it off because the small parting tool that I use in the Boxford lathe is a bit too short to go all the way through it. I'm using one of two carbide tip tools like this that I have and they're very good and generally speaking turn the metal really well. The problem with getting pieces of stainless steel from scrapyards is you don't know what it is. This is the piece before I started machining it. You can see it has to fit in this tank to support another tank. A good test for stainless steel is to use a magnet. If it's not magnetic, then generally speaking, it is stainless steel. But some stainless steels are slightly magnetic. This is the method that I use to mark the correct length that I need it to be. A felt tip pen. And now, back to the lathe. I fitted my small parting tool and with plenty of lubricant, it is parting off without event. It's not chattering, and everything's looking good. Stainless steel rapidly work hardens if any of the tools you use to machine it rub against the metal. In the home workshop, I do not have a coolant service. It's very smelly stuff, and I really don't like it. I use this stuff. It's called Tigris Metal Working Spray. There are major differences between the machines that you find in industry and the ones in the home workshop. You always have to work within the constraints of the abilities of your machinery and your own abilities. After successfully parting off the end bit of the stainless steel, it's time to face across the front. And once again, it seems to be fine, except when I get near to the middle. And the reason for this is, as you get nearer to the middle of the work, the surface speed of the metal is much slower. And this cutting tool doesn't like that at all. You can see the rings appearing it's fine further out. If you watch some videos of commercial CNC machines you'll realise how much faster they go than mine. What I'm doing here is centre drilling the part, being very careful not to snap off the centre drill, using plenty of lubricant. You can hear how it started to chatter. Eventually though I get a really nice centre hole in the end of the piece of bar. The next part of the operation is to fit a twist drill which is tapping size for M6. I normally work in imperial measurements, so why am I suddenly using metric? Simple, I only have stainless steel metric bolts. Here I've turned the part round in the chuck to process the other side. A very simple job, and once again look at the rings in the centre because the speed's too slow. Next question, why don't I change the speed of the lathe? The answer is simple. The motor and speed change device is in a cupboard right at the bottom of the lathe and I have a bad back. From years of doing gigs and carrying Hammond organs and Leslie cabinets around. Here I'm just repeating the process, centre drill first, followed by twist drill. From this drilling operation the metal is now quite hot. I let it cool and then I threaded the hole M6. I threaded the hole manually but I used the lathe in reverse to wind out the tap, anything that saves time. In the next part, the job became difficult and made a horrible noise during the process. I'm trying to put some design into this pedestal by turning away the centre part and reducing the diameter, because if I use it like it is, it will work fine, but it will look horrendous. 
It's all down to a matter of taste and scale. For this part, I thought it would be a good idea to use a round nose tool. And off we go with a carbide tipped round nose tool in the tool post. The round nose tool shatters badly and makes a horrible screeching noise, which is really loud. I've turned it down on the soundtrack. The only way I can get this tool to work is to use plenty of lubricant to take very fine cuts. And I really think my lifespan is not long enough to reduce the diameter of the centre of this bar as much as I want to. Here I'm trying to brush away the swarf that is gathering around the tip. But that didn't work. I stopped the lathe and removed the swarf with a pair of pliers. Never use your fingers. Swarf coming off metal like this is razor sharp. By using a shallower cut, the tool does do the job. I currently have both fingers in both ears. In this next clip, the lathe is not running at a high speed. The video is. 400% to be exact. Throughout this video, I was fighting the urge to take the part out of the Boxford and put it in the Smart and Brown, but no, as I said earlier, most people, particularly beginners, do not have large toolroom lathes in their workshops. By this time I was getting really bored, and the job was progressing so slowly I thought, well, I'm going to have to do something about this. I'm not using the correct tool, really. A straight, round-nosed tool would probably be better. But then not only would the camera not be able to see the cutting process, the tool holder itself would get in the way. In the end I tried a different approach, this is more logical. I went back to the original tool which cuts beautifully. If it was machining cast iron I would use a round nose tool, this seemed to be fine on cast iron, but it's certainly not been so good on this. I enjoy model engineering at the level and standard that I do it. After all, it's just a sequence of fault finding. Because the work is supported by the chuck and a live centre, it's quite rigid. And as you can see, apart from when I try and cut at this end when I engage the tool, the tool is cutting very well. I thought it would be a good idea to change the position of the tool post, but it didn't seem to make much difference. In fact, it made the chattering worse. I can actually take deeper cuts, but it doesn't feel or sound good. But this depth of cut seems to work quite well, and the job is progressing nicely now. This is almost the finished part. I'm just removing the sharp edges with a file, obviously only at the live centre end. I turned it round to do the other end. After removing the sharp edges, I used some wet or dry sandpaper just to clean up the part, although it looked OK as it was, really. An annoying piece of swarf kept getting in the way. Eventually I stopped the lathe and removed it. This is what I made the part for. A live steam injector overflow tank. There are more details showing the making of this part in episode 11 of a model steam engine test plant. I will edit and voice over that episode all being well tomorrow. Please stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.